Welcome to Cut to the Chase, where we talk about compelling legal, regulatory, and public interest information and news. Your host is Greg Goldfarb, an attorney, entrepreneur, investor, and activist. All right, folks, time for our favorite podcast, Cut to the Chase. And I brought Brett Tremblay on today to discuss how to grow your law firm, how to do things that a lot of lawyers that own law firms don't know how to do delegate. Brett has a law firm, Trembley Law Firm. He also is co-owner of Get Staffed Up. And one of the things that I love about doing my podcast is a lot of times I need answers to questions, how to do things or whatever. And then I bring a guest on and they answer my question. What my question is for me is I need to get staffed up. One of my clients gave me a big project. I'm like, oh my God, I don't have enough staff. So this gentleman here is going to help me figure out what I need to do. And also talking about really making the move to get the right mindset to get your law firm to the next level. Brett, can you help us get there today? Yeah, Greg, thanks. Th- thanks for having me on. Let's let's chat about it. I'm I'm happy to talk through uh, any any topic you think is relevant for, for your audience. Absolutely. All right, Brett, like myself, he's he's a homie. He's a Miami guy. His law firm does commercial and franchise law. Uh, really, I don't know how you do. You also just wrote a book, 24 Months to Freedom. Let's first talk about the book. What? How's the book going? Like, give me the experience of writing a book. It's your second book. Yeah. And, and yeah. it covers a lot of the topics that we're going to cover today. Absolutely. So 24 Months to Freedom is a roadmap for law firms starting. I mean, you know, a, a lot of law firms out there, you know, are no longer solos. But if you're starting it as a solo, or maybe you have a few people, it's how to like when and why and where to hire people along the road. So in 24 months, you can go from having no employees to having seven, um, all virtual or, or maybe one in person and and seeing that how those those hires are going to help your revenue grow and, and and you know why you need to hire them and train them for three or four months before you bring on another one um it has case studies it, it has the whole thing in it so um it's been it's been the process of writing the book is interesting um you know i tried i tried having kind of like a, a ghost writer twice and it didn't really work so I worked with a really good company this time that helped me with so many things, but I ended up writing it, doing the rewrite, like word for word, that that's, that's all, all me, if you will. Um, and so, you know, it's a long process and, and some people are able to, to write, maybe they get up early and they'll write from like five to six or six to seven in the mornings. I can't do that. I need to write in, in just big chunks of time. So I dedicated two full weekends from Friday afternoon to like Sunday at two or three in the morning. And I just told my family, I'm going to be in my home office and you're not going to see me all weekend. And so I just spent, you know, again, 48, you know, or or more hours those weekends, just, just knocking it out. I did that twice to get the book ready to be published. So it was, it was a fun process, but it did take about nine months. All right. So you actually, the story that we're going to talk about today and and some of the topics you've actually lived through yourself. I mean, you've grown your law firm pretty quickly. You're a young guy. And so what you're going to tell us, you've actually done, implemented yourself, continue to implement, and it's worked. Um, Let's give, let's talk about delegation because I know that's a big thing with you. I know a lot of lawyers like myself want to do everything. Don't trust your staff. Don't think they can do it. Uh, maybe you've had some yeah. bad experiences where you have delegated. Let's give me what's the pro, what's the issue with the delegation and where and how do you get the mindset to do it as a law firm operator? Sure. So the first thing is most lawyers are are sort of taught and told you know how fantastic we are, and so we all think that what we do is the best. Like we all think we're in the top ten percent of lawyers in the in the country in the world, right? Um. And even 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 if not, even if it's not quite that far, we we just are so worried about the product we put out that we're scared to let anyone else touch the legal work. So let's leave that aside for a second. Let's say, fine, you're you're the one that's going to do the legal work. And 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 when you're you know just starting out, it's going to have to be you anyway. Most lawyers don't realize that their law firm is a business. And I use a restaurant analogy. A restaurant, for example, unless it's just a, a hot dog stand on a corner. Right. And you can have a law firm that is that, but you need a host or a hostess 
You need a waiter, right? Or wait staff. You need kitchen staff. You need dishwashers. You need somebody, you know, running the business, you know, doing the marketing, the promotion. A business needs what a business needs. And when you're a law firm owner and you're trying to wear all those hats, so many things are falling through the cracks. And it's no wonder that most solos are just really, you know, tired, miserable, overwhelmed, and they can't figure out that they need to delegate. And then when they do figure that out, they think, well, I, you know, I don't have time for that or I don't have the money for that. So it's really a combination of all those factors. There's never going to be a usually never, and I hate to use absolutes, but there's almost never going to be a point where you say, okay, well, now I have $50,000 in my bank account. And so now I can hire someone because I can, I can afford to pay them for a year. I've talked, that's what I used to think. And I, I talked to so many attorneys who think that way, like, well, I don't have any money. So how am I going to hire someone? It's costing you money not to hire someone. The reason you don't have money is because you're acting as your own assistant and you're spending most of your time, 90% of your time, probably you know, the stats bear out that that lawyers usually only bill about one to 1.5 hours per day and only get paid for about one hour per day. So by not hiring someone and doing all the other admin stuff, you're getting in your own way and you're preventing yourself from bringing in more revenue and doing a better job to serve your clients. I talked to a guy the other day and I said, well, when are you going to get that work done? He's like, you know, Saturday midnight. But he, well, he wasn't joking. And I've been through that. All of us have. And we we just think if we work harder, harder, that one day it'll all like we'll figure it out instead of stepping back and saying, well, how am I spending my time and and how can I get better at that? Yeah. And a lot of times you have to actually spend the time from what I've seen. I've been I've, I've run three law firms, right, you know, for throughout my career. And, you know, sometimes you got to spend a little time training um, and that's your better, your better, it's a better use of your time. But even that, I think is something that's delegatable. You know, I've gr I've gotten to the point where I'm like, all right, I can't sit here and tell everybody how to, you know, run a fax machine or what. I mean, that was, those are the old days. Yeah. Where, no, no, right. Exactly. You know, right now I'm trying to, de you know, create some time for me to figure out this, you know, AI and how to use it for my business or whatever. And I'm just, you know, it's so overwhelming. For someone in my situation, I'm you know 57 years old or whatever, to all of a yeah. sudden learn another major technology, you know, it was, uh, you know, it's a little bit mind boggling. But I, but I'm a firm believer in delegation. And some of my staff, I, I when I hire them, I say, listen, I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna tell you how to work, do some of this stuff. You got to figure it out. So if you want the job, you got to tell me, look at my eyes, and tell me that you're gonna yeah. figure out how to, you know, connect with some in inmates that I represent or whatever, whoever it is, you know. Yeah. And so part of this delegation, though, is is staffing. And I know you run the largest and fastest growing virtual staffing company in the United States for lawyers. Get staffed up. I don't know how you yeah. have the time to do that, but let's talk about that in connection with the delegation, because delegation goes hand in hand with with staffing. And I know across the board, people are having trouble finding employees and everybody wants to work remotely and nobody wants them, you know, so there's yeah. all this going on. Let's talk yeah. about that. Let's talk about the virtual employee. What is that? Sure. Well, first of all, I, I spend 80% of my time on Get Staffed Up. So Get Staffed Up is not some side hustle. Like we, we're, we're a, uh, you can see, you know, Inc. 5000, we have 180 of our own internal employees. We serve over 500 law firms with almost a thousand um, what we call staffers, virtual team members placed in law firms. Um, so I spent years building up the leadership team at my law firm so that I could spend more time, you know, on, on this endeavor. It was a very intentional effort on my part. So a virtual um, team member is somebody that works for you. They just live, you know, they, they don't come into the office. I mean, they could, they could be in the same city as you, but if they don't come in, that, that's a virtual team member. What we're doing is saying, look, it's really, really hard these days to find, like you just said, Greg, to find solid, hardworking, dedicated team members that are going to be with you for the long run. And turnover is really hard on any business, but the smaller you are, the harder it is. And when you start to, to not limit yourself to just people within the United States, then you realize there's a whole world of people out there that are those things, hardworking, dedicated, educated and it speak really, really great English because that's that's what most people are afraid of. Most companies that do what we do are in the Philippines, and and that's that's fine. But the Philippines is saturated, 
And we also started in the Philippines in 2018. And then we quickly realized that our absolute best people that were just, you know, making people do backflips almost quite literally for how good of people we were finding them was in Latin America. And so um, currently we solely recruit out of Latin America, which means the culture lines up really well, the values, the, 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 the understanding and the English is just phenomenal. So we, we play seven positions. So your law firm needs a receptionist. We give you a full-time reception. We find one for you, I should say, because you're ultimately in charge of who you're hiring. You're not abdicating your hiring process. You're just partnering with somebody who's going to speed it up for you and, and, and know how to recruit for you. Um, so uh, we place executive assistance is, is the, the main thing that we place still. And that's because your time as the law firm owner is still the most valuable um, time component of and for your law firm. Like you have to protect your time and delegate all the things getting in the way of you, you know, either doing more legal work or more networking or whatever, whatever it is to grow your firm. And, and I don't mean just grow your firm, you know, forever. I just mean to reach your goals and get to the point where you are sustainable and you have a business that can run without you because then you have a real business. You don't have a job. Um, we place marketing assistance, we place legal assistance, we place intake specialists, we place billing assistance, and we place um, client happiness coordinators. So those are the seven positions that we we place. Uh, we don't do lawyers. Our legal assistants um, can be trained and over time become paralegal. So that's pretty cool. Um, and so look, that's Greg, what we're doing is we're we're solving the biggest pain point for for law firms, which is like you said earlier, I can't find good people and I need to. Yeah. All right. So these are all people that are bilingual, speak Spanish and yeah. English fluently. Yeah. And that's huge. Um, you know, going back to the Philippines, just, you know, I was on a cruise uh, four or five years ago and I was like, wow, I cannot believe how good the staff is. And everybody like has, you know, kind of looks similar. And then I found out every single person that worked on the cruise was Philippines. And I was, yeah. and I, I, you know, I was like, wow, I, I'd love to hire some Phil. But yeah. then, all right, so, all right. So let's get practical here. I'm listening to the show and I'm like, you know what? You convinced me that I really do need, or I do know I need to hire people. What What's the benefit to hiring these people from Latin America, as opposed to, let's say, you know, Memphis? Sure. Um, well, the, the main thing, of course, is the cost savings. So it's going to cost you less than about a third to less than a third, depending on where you live, right? Like for you and I in Miami, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than to hire somebody in North Dakota, probably. Um, but the cost savings. So the way it, it works through us is you pay us a flat fee per month all in. Whereas here, whatever you hire someone, let's say you hire someone, even if, even if, you know, it's like, somebody right out of college or a college student, and you hire them for 35, 40,000, right? It still costs you another 30 to, to 40% in employment taxes, overhead, everything else. You have to factor in those real costs. Um, and when you hire through us, you, you know, you're, you're saving all of those things because we, they're our legal employees. So we stay on as the employer and, and we manage the payroll and, and all that good stuff. Um, the other thing we found is that you know, you're not going to find in the U.S. anymore somebody to hire for ten dollars an hour as a, as a, a young secretary, for example, and then that person's going to just be with you for life. And every year you give them like a dollar raise, for example, per year. You know, like that. But the the housewife from the '50s that that wants that job, like that, just doesn't exist anymore. People can't make a good living off that kind of money. So that's where you see the turnover because the law firm. The position is a fifteen dollar an hour position, but that's not what's what's going to make people happy. So, so that your domestic employees always have one foot in and one foot out. There's also a sense of entitlement to I deserve a good job. I, I deserve to be employed and and you know not work that hard. So we see a lot of that here domestically. And you know I would say at the end of the day that if you are just comparing skill set to skill set, most of the people we're finding for your staff level positions are head and shoulders better in Latin America than they are here domestically. I mean, people here just aren't trained for those kind of positions anymore, nor do they want them. Yeah. All right. So soup to nuts, you're talking taxes. You handle, you handle the taxes. Yep. We do all that. Uh, let's say I got to reprimand one of the employees or, 
you know, fire them. You do that or I do that? No, we, we, we do that for you. And we have what's called a replacement guarantee, Greg. Um, so if, if you're, if you need to move on from someone or if they leave you for any reason, which obviously happens, we're still dealing with humans here. Um, we, we move you to the front of the line and within probably three or four days, we have new candidates for you to start interviewing to, to, to replace. And that saves you what six weeks and tons of, of time and money from, from doing it yourself. Um, you know, that's again, when I'm talking about solving that turnover problem, which plagues small businesses, most, most of the time people just get fed up and they're like, I'm not going to fill that position. It's too much training. It's too much of my time only for those people to leave. Yeah. All right. And I'm assuming the training would be us on us, the, the law firm, right? Correct. That's one thing is we, we don't, you know, we help with onboarding, but we don't, we don't do training because every law firm is so different. In fact, most of our clients come to us through, you know, coaches and advisors and, and people that are, are helping law firms, you know, grow or develop or learn in one area or another saying, you need more help here, contact, get staffed up. And then we're going to help you. I mean, the coach doing this, you know, develop um, a scorecard, a job description and a training program, because that's, that's part of being a manager, being a boss. I mean, you, you really can't just you know, to use the word again, abdicate that responsibility. Like you, it's your business. You've got to take ownership of the training component. However, a lot of our clients, some of our bigger clients anyway, through the years that have grown with us, have one of their um, team members through us take over the training program. Yeah. That's nice. I like that. That's, yeah. That brings a big smile to my face. Yeah. All right. So, you know, what would be involved? Uh, all right. Let's say I need three employees right now. I just call you up and I say, I need these kinds of employees right now. And with a snap of a finger, they're there or like, what's the process? No, it's about a two to three week process because first of all, we got to do our, our, our own freedom call or, or decision-making call where we give you, you know, cause we have three different price points depending on the type of staffer, which um, the lowest is 1995 per month, again, all in and on the highest end, which is the marketing assistant. It's um, like twenty two ninety five per month, um, and then there there's there's a middle ground. Um, again, we play seven positions, so I, you know the all you know all seven have have a different price point, um, or I should say three common price points. And then what we do is we start you know we tell our recruiting team who's constantly recruiting huge pools of people. We, we recruit eight to we get about eight to ten thousand applications per week, Greg. Like this is a, a massive really? recruiting wow. machine that we built. Over a three-week process, we whittle that down through, you know, interviews, tests, screening, English proficiencies to the top about 100 out of that eight to 10,000. And then out of those 100, we put them through a week-long academy and we pay everybody to go through that academy. If you graduate, if you don't graduate, then we pay you anyway and, and it doesn't work out. But for the ones that do graduate, then we start saying, okay, what are the profiles of our graduates plus our, you know, our leftover grads from last week and the people we have. And we start taking all the information that we got from you during our, um, we have a great start planning session. So we, we use software to, to have you fill out and, and it tells us how you work or how the supervisor for that position is going to work. Plus all of the details that our clients need from that position. You know, is it someone on the phone? Well, they better be very outgoing and speak well and be cheery. Is it someone behind the scenes? They better be very organized. All of the little things that we're recruiting for and building profiles, then we start to match those profiles and say, okay, Greg, you know, needs a, a billing assistant. You know, here are the two, which one matches best with him? Okay, Greg, in, you know, we're going to put this person in front of you to interview and you're going to let us know if, if um, you want to interview that person. Yes, no. And then once you interview that person, whether you want to hire them, yes, no. And I know I'm getting into the weeds here, but yeah, it's no, a very no, no. thorough process, but we've designed it to be very client friendly and, and we get a lot of good feedback about the client experience. I mean, this is this show is not philosophical or theor theoretical. This is <laughs> this is practical. So, all right. And it's like I'm interviewing, okay. right? I'm, in, I'm interviewing you right now. That's sure. Right. So get staffed up. How long is get, get staffed up and in, in, in operation? We just passed our five year anniversary. In nice. July. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, and all right. So I'm going to assume that all these employees would be working virtually. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're, they're all in Latin America. 
All right. So systems wise, what would be involved? Am I, do they have computers? I got to fix, I got to basically get my IT person to download software on their computers and all that. Is there, is that part of the process? Yeah, it, it depends on the firm. So first of all, they all have to have really good internet and good enough computers to work for us and our clients. And then if they're a receptionist, some of our clients ship them a phone. Others have them answer the phone through, you know, the computer. And when I say receptionist, I mean full-time first answer receptionist. So when when the phone rings, you know, it's, hi, you know, Goldfarb Law Firm, for example. Um, oh, can I speak to, you know, Samantha? I'm making up names here. Sure. You know, pound one, two, three, the VoIP phone systems work the same it's going to take the same amount of time to transfer that call all the way back to your office you know in miami for example greg so a lot of our clients have full-time receptionists through us i mean over 100 and and their clients mostly don't know um yeah. so the it there is is especially if you're a smaller firm and you don't have an it person there is just a learning curve but we we help you through that we've got a a full-time it staff and our, our client experience department will help you with the software we have there's remote desktops that um, a lot of our clients just pay for. It's like forty dollars a month for their their staffer to log in and have a, a fully functioning desktop that's controlled by the law firm owner that um, is easy to shut down. For example, if that person leaves, so that that's a that's a pretty cool thing. I mean, the technology you'd be surprised at how easy it is um, to get that up and running with somebody that's that's in a different country. Because yeah. essentially, if somebody's in the office next to you, you're doing the same thing. You're setting up with an email address. You're setting them up with logins. Um, and that's done through a computer. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess you are all in on remote working. Um, what, do you, what do you mean? You, you mean in how I feel about it? Yeah. Like you're not hesitant to recommend. And I mean, oh. that's basically everybody that you're that you're setting uh law firms up with they're working remotely Every, everybody yeah that's all, right. all yeah. we do it all we do yeah yeah so i mean like i'm old school and my uh, my employees work both they do they go to the office and then they yeah. work remotely and when things go, aren't going bad i always scream i mean i knew this you know remote work stuff is no way get back to the office <laughs> like that's good that's always my solution or whatever and then we yeah. fight and debate and you know things never change but so Explain why you believe or, you know, are seeing that people working remotely, it's the same. It's like they're right next door anyway. So what are you talking yeah. about? Sure. So, you know, by the way, at my law firm, we have a hybrid approach. So, you know, before the pandemic, we were every day in the office. Now, two days per week, the litigation team comes in and two days per week, the business law team comes in. Right. So it's more more of a, a shared office experience because I, I'm with you. It, it's nice to have the, the energy and have the people in the same spot, especially when they were used to working that way. Now get staffed up is fully virtual. And we've had several of our, our, you know, high priced uh, fractional consultants that we've hired throughout, throughout the years, three different ones have told us that we have the best company culture of any company that they've ever really? seen in, in person or remote. Right. And we, we do, you know, quarterly, you know, you know, parties that are really fun on Zoom. We have um, quarterly conversations with every single one of our, our employees about are they happy here? You know, what are their goals? And we give them feedback on how they're doing. Um, we have morning huddles. So every team is on a huddle and communicating. There's a lot of ways to have a really good virtual company culture. And probably 20 percent of our clients are fully virtual. But the other 80 are a form of hybrid. So you have your domestic team and then you have support. So if, you ha if you've if you got, you know, three attorneys at your firm, you know, get them a shared executive assistant to, to handle their scheduling and their email and everything else. And you'll see the productivity of those high performers and, and you know, the expensive salaried team members go, go up, you know, quite significantly because again, You've got to delegate all of the things that not just you, but your attorneys and, and even your paralegals, you got to, have to delegate the items that are getting in the way from them being more productive. Well, I'm glad you brought up the, uh, you know, the culture and all that, because I was going to, I, 
when I was making writing questions, I'm like, should I ask him that question? Because I would think that there's no chance you could get good co corporate culture or business culture, you know, whatever the, the proper phrase is these days, working yeah. in this kind of scenario. But it, it sounds like you've 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 accomplished well, that as well. And our go let, ahead. let me say let me say one more thing, Greg. So um, Trembly Law, we've got about 20 domestic team members and about 15 offshore through Get Stopped Up. And those, we developed a program where they started asking if they could come visit our, our team, our offshore team. And so last year, four of them flew in before our holiday party. And we took them out on a boat in Key Biscayne and we put them up in a hotel. Um, it really wasn't that expensive of an endeavor because we, we planned ahead. But, you know, it just goes to show you that the, you know, they wanted to, to come be, you know, experience what we did here because they feel so much a part of the team, you know, and, and I'm sure they, they do feel a little bit left out at points because, there's, you know, you can't really get away from the fact that there will be things that happen domestically that they can't be a part of. But um, you, when, when you're really thoughtful about it and you include them and you do a lot of virtual meetings like at my law firm our friday team meetings are all on zoom they're not in person because we can include everybody that way and when you do that you can have a really great company culture you know hybrid like you said both in person domestic and with your team that's offshore all right so i want to two more things what 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 do you what do you recommend for the law, the lawyer out there right now, started their law firm, growing their law firm, hit a roadblock. They know that they're pissing away too much time doing nonsense as opposed to law, high ticket items or whatever. What's the mindset that you think is needed to propel us to get to that? Yeah. Inc. 5000 that I see staring at me in, on your screen. <laughs> um, I think that, that we all have times in our lives where we get so busy, we end up just going through the motions and that can happen for months or years at a time where, where we don't even realize it, but we're on the hamster wheel and we're just getting up and we kind of have a plan with what we want to do with our day. But instead, we get to the office and we get an email. And so we, re we react to it. We respond to it. And we let other people, our clients, opposing counsel, you know, dictate what we do with our day. And so it's kind of like all day you're, you're fighting fires. And if you're not careful, you can just get into that. And then you can feel like, well, I don't have, I'm so busy. I, I'm doing the right thing because I'm busy and I don't have time, you know, to, to, to grow or to hire people. But when you really start peeling the onion, you know, Greg, I was in the uh, a room last week in Atlanta full of lawyers. And I love asking this question now because it's never failed. But I said, OK, who has more than ten thousand dollars in AR? Almost every hand went up. Right. Who has more than 50? A lot of hands. Who has more than 100? There's always somebody in the room that has at least one hundred thousand dollars of AR that's just sitting out there. And that person's thinking about marketing and how to get their next client instead of just asking for the money that they've already done the work for. You know, it's like, it's like, I don't know, indentured servitude, like doing the work and then just refusing to get paid for it because us lawyers cannot stand sending out our invoices, you know, capturing our work, putting it in, in our system, our timekeeping system the right way, running the batch bills, correcting them, and then sorting them, right? It's kind of a pain to each client. Even if you have client portals and, and it's amazing when you hire a billing assistant and you turn that part over, you take the awkwardness out of asking yourself. And all of a sudden, instead of bills going out once every six months, when you finally get fed up and you need to collect some money, they start going out twice per month and cash flow starts to equalize. It'll change It'll change everything about the way you do business. It'll change that anxiety pit in your stomach from not getting paid. It'll change the, you ever get a, a new client and then you're like, you sign them up, but then you feel, oh no, who's going to do the work? And so you kind of feel bad. All of those things will start to change when you get people on your team that are going to help you run the business the way that a business can be fun to run when it's done the right way. 
Yeah. And I think that a lot of lawyers, law firm owners that are struggling with the delegation and taking on too much to do, I think if they would kind of put themselves in their client's shoe and ask the like, yeah. what do you think the client thinks percentage wise you are spending doing law and your cases <laughs> versus, you know, the administration? You know, and, and and I think if people realize that, hey, you know, my client wants me to be lawyering and thinking about the case and all that and not, you know, oh, my God, people haven't paid bills and I got a market and this, that and the other thing. So I think you just got to get that mindset, you know, adjust yeah. it and, and be, maybe be a little patient. And, you know, you got to you got to do it the right way. And um, I think that that's really you know, a helpful kind of way to look at things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. All right. Last thing I, you know, I know you're all with, you know, get staffed up, but you also got your law firm and I don't want to overlook that. Tell us about your law firm. What do you do? I know you do for franchise law and, and commercial stuff. What's, yeah. Give, give the audience a little bit of flavor on that. Oh, sure. Greg. Thank you. You know, we, we represent business owners and entrepreneurs. So whatever business owner, it could be employment defense, could be employment contracts, uh, contracts with third parties, right. Being more commercial corporate work or litigation, because as hard as we try to keep our clients out of messes, you know, litigation happens and that includes franchisees and franchisors. So we do a lot of franchise law as well. So yeah. just, uh, uh, you know, we only only do business in corporate, but within that realm, we do whatever business owners need. Yeah. And I think the testament to you and what you're doing is the fact that we're doing this Monday morning at nine o'clock. You know, I'd, I never really would even think that, you know, somebody could a lawyer could get their brain so organized and composed to be able to do a podcast at nine o'clock on a Monday morning. But you did it. Uh, with, and and stress free, by the way, I, I don't it's not like I have you know, a million things I'm supposed to be doing at this time it, with, with, you know, block calendaring is another, I just assume most people know what that is by now, but a lot of people still don't. You got to put, you know, schedule your callback, schedule the time during your day when you're going to look at your email and stick to it. If you're going to check your email at nine and at two, those are the only two times per day you should be looking at your email. We got to treat email like we used to treat mail. Somebody else opened the mail, sorted the mail, Put the mail on our desk at a specific time every day, as you know, Greg, because, you know, you and I are at least old enough to have seen the, you know, how, how it used to be. And we had to go through the mail and just dictate what our responses were. And it took us about 30 minutes every day. Instead, we spend our whole lives now in email thinking we have to respond right away. And it's really, it's really, I think, put a, put a, you know, a damper on the, on the happiness and practicing law. And if you get that email under control, again, it, it can be. It can be fun to practice again. All right. We're going to leave it at that. Uh, Brett, Brett Trombley from Trembley Law Firm. Get staffed up. All right, lawyers, you're out there listening. Give the man a Greg. call. You know, maybe you're not sure. You, you got one more thing. I can see it. Yeah, well, I, I want to help, you know, your listeners, which is uh, we created a landing page just for you and your listeners. It's getstaffedup.com slash cut to the chase with a dash in between in between each word cut dash to dash the chase and if you go there you'll see uh you can get a link to the book uh, you can get a discount for working with us and there's lots more information so if anyone's interested uh pretty easy to find us all right and that'll go on the show notes and that's the best way to get in touch with you right yeah all right thank you for coming on today and uh move on to your next task all right <laughs> thank you so much for having me greg i really enjoyed it thank you all right everybody you know what to do subscribe rate review if you have questions uh for brett you know how to find him all right and if you have questions of me you know how to find me as well all right that'll do it that's all for this episode of cut to the chase but before you go will you open up your podcast app and give us a five-star review you can also leave a comment about what you liked most or other topics you'd like us to cover and please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming shows. Thanks, everybody. Be safe out there.